Grace and peace be yours in abundance through God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The central message of Christianity is found in the cross. It is laden with the whole story of God. There is plenty of meaning to contemplate in the cross without ever reaching the end of its wonder. Many Christians keep a cross with them daily. Hymns are sung like, beneath the cross of Jesus, and Jesus keep me near the cross. We sing of our trust in what God did through the cross for us. This sentiment is so different from 2,000 years ago, when just to mention the cross was shocking. It was not the place to go. We really cannot understand what crucifixion was, because we have never seen anything like it in the flesh. In Jesus' day, Everybody had seen crucified men along the roadsides. They knew exactly what it looked like, what it sounded like, what it smelled like. And they learned it was best not to care. Because this form of execution was as low and despised as one could get. The Romans had a term for it condemned as the beast. They called it. Which is ironic because in most parts of the world today, it would be unacceptable to kill even an animal that way. Execution is still practiced today for the worst crimes. 30 states in our country permit the death penalty. Under our law, it's carrying out is supposed to avoid needless cruelty, and it happens deep behind prison walls, beyond the public's view. This is dark business. We don't like to dwell on the sadness and the tragedy of the lives affected. And yet, the Apostle Paul insisted on bringing up the cross. And doing so, he scandalized Romans and Christians, Jews and Greeks alike, by speaking of this instrument of death and proclaiming it for God's salvation. We preach Christ crucified, Paul declares, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. As you look at the cross, what do you see? What should we see? Well, we have spoken of what Rome intended to display its power over lawbreakers, runaway slaves, insurgents, army deserters, and common criminals. But this was not justice served. It was vengeful. It was political. It was an act of terror on the whole population. The cross was the ultimate abuse of power. What else do you see? Well, we see wood. The cross that will be processed forward and laid on the chancel steps tonight comes from the weathered wood of a barn. Wood that once was a tree. And therein we remember the original story of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, 
that grew in the heart of Eden. In that garden, God gave Adam and Eve responsibility to care for the earth. Instead, they attempted to seize power for themselves to eat of the forbidden fruit, hoping to become as wise as God and rule themselves. And humanity didn't stop with eating apples. Think of how the soldiers took a tree God made and turned it into such a horrific weapon. And in myriad ways, those children of Adam and Eve up to this day continue to twist and misuse what God gives us. Our sin should place us on the cross. But when we look, Jesus is there instead. <coughs> and in him we see the staying power of God's love for us to the end. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in this world, he loved them to the end. From the cross, Jesus spoke. It is finished. And he breathed his last. And in that moment is where we begin to see light coming from the cross. A light that overcame the evil on that despised hill, that place of death. And now we see the power of sacrifice, the life of God's Son given for all. It is called the Great Exchange. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. The cross is the central message of Christianity. It is also the shape of Christianity. After Jesus explained to his disciples that he must suffer, he told them, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. The Apostle Paul instructs the new community in Philippi to have the mind of Christ the humility of Christ on the cross. The cross becomes the shape of Christianity and the shape of you and me in a Christ-like life of service. Twice a month I lead a community <coughs> service at Wildflower Memory Care. It's a cheerful group where residents play hymns on the piano and we sing. And I use a lot of visuals when I am storytelling to aid their memory. And when it's time for the gospel, I hand out these crosses to each person. And I say, okay, let's hold on to our crosses. Let's listen to Jesus and hold on to him. And we hear the gospel. People of God, this cross is now the cross of Christ. Do you hear me? Christ has won ownership of this cross forever. Amen. I have been with people weak and to the point of death. And I can tell you that the cross commands all their attention. I make the cross on their forehead. I hold it before them. For this cross is Christ's cross and the power of Christ to raise us to new life and eternal life.
There are endless ways that we can find meaning in the cross. It comes down to love, the love of Jesus, who bore the violence, the pain, the sin of the world <coughs> that came down on his shoulders. God's Son was able to redeem the cross and make it a tree of life and salvation. If God can do that, then we know that God is with us in all things. He will mend what is broken in us. He will heal us with his forgiveness. Tonight you'll have opportunity to come before the cross, to ponder its meaning and its power. And as we leave in silence, please stop by the welcome table. There are crosses to take home. Take one and hold on to it for dear life. Amen.